though, I'm just going to play this song from the build up into the drop. And the first thing that we're going to get into is processing these drums. So this song really slaps, but um, these drums are already really great, but we're going to go into them and just really improve them. And that's pretty much what it's all about is these subtle improvements that will just, you know, progressively make our song better. But I'm going to solo the drums and then I'm going to go through each one of the tracks and sort of show you what's on the track. And then we're going to get into it and process it ourselves. So there really is not a lot that are on these tracks and that's because you just don't want to overdo it with processing. I see the biggest mistake I see people making is over processing their tracks and then like wondering why their tracks sound like thin. They might be over EQing or over compressing. So we're just going to squash the confusion now and sort of go, go through what you should be doing if you need to be doing anything at all. So let's start with this kick. So we have this kick. Uh, right here and it has an EQ on here which is just doing a low cut and a high cut and then a glue compressor with the soft clipper on which is boosting three decibels so I'm going to play it um, with it and then I'm going to play the kick with without it so it definitely sounds different and that has a lot to do with this low cut so I'm going to open up the first plugin that we're going to talk about and it's going to be Fab Filter Pro Q2. So this is the best plugin in my opinion, and it's the one that we're going to be using the most because EQ is the most important plugin. So this is what Fab Filter Pro Q2 looks like when you open it up, and um, it's just a really good-looking EQ to be honest. Like you can just sort of hover over these frequencies, and you can see at the bottom right around here, it'll tell you like which frequency exactly you're hovering over which is so useful. And then you can sort of just double click and make your cut and you can change the cue, the gain, the frequency, the um, EQ, like um, the band type, whether it's like a, you know, a bell, a low shelf, low cut, high, high shelf, a notch, which it just literally will just notch out that certain frequency, which is great. Um, band pass or tilt shelf, which is like sort of just offsetting the rest. Uh, just, you know, if you're just like, okay, I just want the highs to be a little bit bigger and then everything else, you can sort of just really balance out um, the, you know, the balance of EQs. So basically what we're going to do for this is I'm going to go back to, um, I'm just going to delete this. I'll open up a new one and we're going to we're going to recreate that EQ. So, if you double click towards the end over here, it'll just automatically low cut. And then down here you can change the intensity of your low cut. So, I'm pretty sure Ableton's it might be at 12 and then it has that like times 4 feature, which I think is this, this uh 48 decibels over octave. If that's even what that how you pronounce that, I'm not sure. That's just how I say it. So we're going to take it around 30 and we're going to listen to the difference. So when you turn this band on and off, you can 100% hear the difference in the low end. If you're using like headphones or listening on monitors or anything like that. 
So it has a more pronounced low end. So a lot of times I do this to cut the extreme lows, but I end up like boosting the lows at the same time. So you can even do things like this too, where it's like you drag the cue up. And you can like get these tuned like bass notes. And Fab Filter just sounds so good. Everything that runs through it sounds great. So um, I think when I do this on Ableton, I just don't like the sound of it. It just sounds a lot cleaner on here. So you can sort of find the exact key you're in. And make these like long gated kicks. So super cool doing that. I really, I really like doing that sometimes. But for now, we're just going to cut the lows and do that. And we'll just make a high cut just because. Oh, yikes. 18,000. So there's a little like muddy area right here. So we're sort of giving a little bit of sub frequencies there. I kind of I kind of like it. Just makes the kick sound a little bit fatter. So let's turn it off. Yeah, the kick sounds real wimpy without it. So we're going to keep that on there. So the next thing we had on this track was a compressor, but we're just going to stick with the Pro Q for now because uh, I'm going to just EQ uh, everything in the drums. But this is essentially just how you would use um, the EQ. But also like other EQs, this has the left right mode and the mid side mode where you can, um, you know, if I wanted to just, maybe I want to take the sides out of the kick, like all the stereo information. I can low cut this and then just select side. And you can see that now I am low cutting the sides. So I don't like to overprocess too many things for a kick. So I'm going to delete this one. But um, yeah, that was just an example. So let's go into this first clap and sort of listen to this and see how we can EQ this. So this clap sounds great. So that is just awesome because now we really don't have to do that much to it. So I'm just going to make sure the lows are cut. And I also can hold this and slide so we can hear like exactly which part of the sound that we're starting to cut because you don't want to over EQ things. So like if I slide this too far up, the clap might completely lose its body and it's like, oh, but I'm trying to get rid of the low frequencies to like save room. But like, it's just not worth it. You just, you know, this, this song sounded great and there was no EQs on these claps. So. Let's leave that there. And I'm just going to boost this little transient frequency right here. And something I like to do too, just to test is I like to make a, a cut at 3,500 and just sort of so Sometimes I just like to sort of cut at this frequency because I hate it. And, um, you know, if frequencies start to accumulate there, I'm just sort of notching them out one by one here. So this EQ sounds good for this clap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this EQ to this clap because it's probably going to be pretty similar. So, okay, so this is more of like a washed out clap. So I'm actually going to just get rid of these. And actually, I'm going to keep this one, and I'm going to roll off these highs.
Because this one, this one has like a little bit of a low end that we don't need. So we can roll this one up a little higher. And then also it gets a little high, uh, harsh in the high end. So we can sort of tame that up there. So that one sounds good. Okay, so this is like our transient clap. So I'm going to copy this one, this clap one EQ over to clap three. And let's go ahead and not low cut this. And you can see there's like a, a little transient right here. And there's like another. So these EQs can get crazy, which is what I love about it. So if this is too crazy, what you can do is you can go down here and there's this gain scale, which is great. I use this all the time. You can slide this and you can basically dial it back or really high. So I think this sort of just brings the clap to life a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm boosting this transient here. I'm notching out that uh, 3500 area. Also, I'm boosting this sound, which is like that clap sound. So that's that like clap sound. This is like the snare underneath it. So that is giving it that punch. And then this is just brightening up the highs and evening it out because we've done a lot of boosting down here. So I don't want the clap to lose its overall like sharpness of it, but I am definitely boosting the lows a little bit more than the highs. So um, yeah, that sounds really good for that. This flam clap, we're not gonna do anything at all. Actually, we might just roll off some of these lows. So I'm gonna low cut this. For something like this, it definitely sounds good, but maybe for this one, I might use like an Ableton EQ just because I'm just trying, you know, I'm not doing anything intense. I'm just trying to roll off those lows, but this does sound a lot better. So let's go to the rides. So for this, I pretty much do the same thing. I'll roll off the lows and then I'm going to go to that 3,500 area and I'm just going to notch this down because I'm pretty sure when the symbol hits, it's going to hit somewhere around there. Yeah. So right here, it's a really harsh frequency for your ear. So I'm just going to notch this out a little. And it's definitely just going to help. It, it, I mean, it definitely sounds better to me. I can hear it slightly, but um, definitely something that'll help. So I'm going to just copy and paste this onto the crash. It should sound great. Yep, sounds good to me. And we can do the same for the hi-hats. Definitely rolling off some of those lows that we don't need. And all right, so let's copy this, do the shaker. Sounds good. And then that's pretty much it for the drums. So let's go ahead and let's listen to all the drums together with the EQs that we've made. All right, so they're sounding good. So that is Pro Q2, and that is basically how I use it uh, with my drums. So the next thing we're gonna get into is Pro C, which is a compressor. And I think this kick definitely needs a compressor on it. 
and it just is it's not sounding tight enough for me so i'm gonna drag on pro c2 and we're gonna compress this so first thing i do when i use these compressors turn off the auto gain i hate the auto gain i just i can't get a grip on like what it does exactly i'm sure that if you're compressing something really hard and you're losing a lot of gain, it's probably going to make up the gain for what you're compressing and just even out the signal a little bit. But for this, I don't want that. I'm trying to uh, use this compressor to control the transients of a certain object or a certain sound. So there are a lot of different settings, but I tend to just like to do this by hand because I know what I'm doing. So basically you have the threshold, the ratio, the attack, the release. You also have your different styles here, but I'm just going to stick with clean. We're not going to really jump into these too much because besides opto, I'm not really sure what the rest do. I know opto is just like a really, really quick version. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to this kick. So basically I love this because of how visual it is. You can see that the threshold is so low. But regardless of how low the threshold is, the attack is just way too fast because you can see that the kick can't even like come through a little bit. So what we're going to do in order to tighten this up is we're going to play around with this attack because we want the compressor to like wait a few milliseconds before it starts to work. So the initial transient of the kick will come through, but then the compressor will like clamp down on the tail. So let's make this extreme. We're going to bring the threshold really far down. And you can just hear that tiny itty bitty click. And as I start to move the attack, you can start to hear more of the kick come through. So that is like a, a way to make a really sharp kick. So then what I would do is I'd probably play with this threshold. So now I'm like, okay, that's probably, that is probably the attack that I want. So now I'm going to play with this threshold. So the kick is really quiet now. So now what I might do is add that gain now. So let's go down to here, output level. Definitely don't want to output the pan. So then what you can do is you can actually mix back in the dry signal. So you can hear a drastic difference in the kick and we definitely made it tighter. So maybe we want to sort of do the dry wet of this, you know? So now we have like a nice dry wet signal to where we can be like, okay, do we want the kick like very tight and very punchy or do we want it like a little bit more loose? So let's listen to everything together and we'll play around with that. And what I can do is I'll just put a limiter on this for now. So now, I mean, listen to the kick before and after we did all of this.
kick sounds so much stronger now. So I really, I, I mean, I really love these plugins. You can do a bunch with them. But uh, the compressor, I mean, the compressor. The compressor really allows it to be like sharp. I mean, that, that is a drastically different kick right there. This kick sounds awesome now. So, I mean, we did that with, uh, you know, Pro C playing with the, the mix. We also play with like the dry gain coming in and also the wet gain. And then we have it like hitting this limiter pretty hard. So as far as this limiter, um, I don't really touch too many things other than this gain because I'm not like, you know, I'm not trying to rely on this limiter, but basically what you can do it just gives a different timbre and it almost gives like a sharper timbre and it also controls the like the peak, you know, we're sort of clamping down on this transient and and we're not kicking or we're not clipping but the kick sounds great so i mean like i know this is a lot of time on a kick but it completely will change your track i mean like if you're listening to a song like let's just play the whole thing I mean, the kick sounds so wimpy without this, like. So, I mean, there you go. And I used to not be a fan of like compressing my kicks like this, but like, you know, you can really make any kick sound great uh, using sort of a combination of these tools. So as far as everything else, I'm probably not going to compress anything else this much because I think the kick was the only thing that really needed the work, but I think it sounds so much better now. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to process the drums as a whole. So what I like to do is I like to put an EQ on here and I like to make a low cut kind of like what we did with the kick. I'll take that to 30 and then I'm going to make a high cut. And I'm going to take that to 18,000. So it just makes the kick a little bit more stronger. But again, if it's too much because we've already done a lot of kick processing, you can pretty much turn this EQ off. So um, it's, you know, it, it all depends what you want, but it will give that kick an extra like oomph. So now what I want to do is I want to open up Saturn because this is the saturator, but basically we are, we could play around with these settings, but what these settings in my opinion are really great for is creating like weird, unique sounding stuff. You can make things definitely just sound better and crisper, but I would do that in a more simple way. So what you can do is like, I don't really mess around with this from scratch, but what you can do is you can make all these different bands and process them how you want. But to be honest, if you do that, it's probably going to end up not sounding the same. And I think the drums just sound good when they're nice and clean. So what I might do is just leave this on warm tape, leave the drive around 15 to 20. And then you can sort of EQ here. So you can have the bass really high or, you know, you can do anything. I just like to give a little boost for the treble. And this presence just gives like the top end a little bit more like of a boost. 
So let's listen to this with and without the EQ. So it just sounds a little bit more glued together, and that's what I want. I don't want it to sound drastic, like it's going to jump out and like, oh my god, these are the best drums ever now because I added these two plugins. Like, that's just not the case. You want to just slowly kind of like do these things along the way, and it'll get you to this final point. So let's go ahead and listen to everything with uh, this process processing that we've just done. So the drums definitely sound better and I'm really happy with how we made this kick just sound so beast. But that is it for processing drums with fab filter plugins. Um, just a quick recap of the drums. We went over pro Q, how to EQ a kick clap, some hi hats and crashes uh, pro C how we made this kick just sounds so beast and pro L just to sort of like top top off this chain and um you know give the kick like a nicer like uh more present timbre but next thing we're going to get into